and welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. I am your host, Stephen Pinecker, and I have a very special guest on my program today, uh, Benjamin Lee, who is originally from Linden, Utah, is a graduate with uh, Brigham Young University, and is about to graduate from Harvard Law School. And he reached out to me about a month ago uh, to tell me about a book that just came out um, called Pride in Paradox. Exploring the Christlike Humility and the Struggle to Defeat Pride. And so there's the book right there. And I wanted to share that. So Benjamin, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to talk today, Stephen. So uh, basically, Benjamin felt the need to write a book. Um, and this is a really, it's kind of an autobiographical book um, that tells his story, but does also fictionalized accounts, but are autobiographical. And uh, talking about his journey and struggle with pride. Now, Benjamin, I'd like for you to tell me, and, and folks, this is what we're doing. We're having like these special little 20 minute segments. We're going to talk about different things of the book. So it's be part of our Tuesday talks series. And so I asked Benjamin to come out and we're going to talk about different themes and ideas expressed in his book. I think this will be very beneficial to the audience. So Benjamin, what made you decide to write this book? Yeah, so I, I was in the middle of finals at the end of my first year of law school. Um, had a long day of studying and I uh, opened up the Bible, which I hadn't done in a while. And I read from Matthew 26, the account where uh, it's the Passover dinner and Jesus says to his apostles, one of you shall betray me. And it says the apostles, each one of them said, Lord, is it I? Um, and something about that verse just really struck me. And immediately all of my worries about school kind of went away. And I, I spent four or five hours that night staying up really late just just reading the bible and thinking about how is it that these apostles were able to uh when when jesus said that not look to anyone else but look inward at, at themselves and it, it caused me to reflect on the last year that i'd, I'd spent as uh, a one l at harvard law school um obsessed with trying to succeed in, in a very competitive environment obsessed with uh trying to get the fancy job and, and trying to, um, you know, kind of make my, make a name for myself. And that kind of just came in conflict with the, this idea of like, well, I, I consider myself a disciple of Christ. There's no way that's how I would have responded. Um, and that, that kind of strong prompting that I had that night persisted for the next two years where every time I kind of had some free time, my mind would go back to that and think, okay, what, what is it that those apostles had that I don't have? And, and how can I, how can I figure out how to both, um, you know, work hard and, and have a successful career? Cause that is important to me, but also what's way more important to me is, is becoming a, a true disciple of Jesus Christ. And so I, I thought that that quality that the apostles possessed and certainly that, that Christ possessed is humility. And, and so I spent, you know, most of my free time for the next two years, um, thinking about what it means to be humble and, and why that's so hard for me. And um, at, at no point did I really decide I'm writing a book. It just like bit by bit, I had thoughts and I did more research and I, uh, you know, next thing I knew I had, you know, over a hundred pages of, of just kind of doctrinal analysis of what, what I think humility might be. And I read it over and I thought these ideas might be useful to other people, but nobody's going to want to read a doctrinal analysis from a 25 year old kid with a linguistics degree and a, you know, one third of a law degree. Um, so uh, we, we've kind of talked about, we both really admire C.S. Lewis and I, I love how C.S. Lewis takes uh, important doctrines and puts them into uh, fiction that makes it easy to read and, and more interesting. Um, so I, I thought maybe I can try to do that. I've never, I'd never really written fiction before, but then I, um, I tried to put it kind of into this fictional narrative that roughly tracked my own experience as a as a law student and here we are hmm, hmm. and so uh you when you wrote out this these notes originally this was were these just notes that you said you were basically just writing these things down and thought and then after you'd written 100 pages you're like oh maybe there's a book in here and that that's what made you decide to do the fictionalized stuff as well was it yeah, the first something just, like i'm really curious so because you had said you had spent two years contemplating humility so this is almost yeah. like a meditative practice that you're doing. You're meditating on yeah. the idea of what it is to be uh, humble and humility and all this kind of stuff. 
Uh, maybe talk about that journey too that led to you writing these things down as well. Yeah, so the first thing I wrote is actually the last thing that appears in the book, which is the, the epilogue. Um, it, it's a little different in the book than it was, but it, I, I wrote that in, uh, mostly during finals. By the time finals had ended, um, I, I had a draft of, of what turned out to be the epilogue, and I, I didn't know who, who it was for, and I ended up just showing my, my grandma, my uh, dad's mom, first because she's kind of my my biggest cheerleader and the um someone I thought would for sure like it and then I she really liked it and then I showed my parents and showed a couple of my friends and they they said this is really um good you should think about continuing to write this stuff and then from there it was like okay I, I wrote this little essay about humility but I I wanted to have a theory for for what humility means in different contexts I didn't feel like that was obvious and so my my process was mostly uh reflecting and studying the life of christ and trying to figure out what does it mean to be humble like christ is humble because it doesn't mean being passive it doesn't mean being you know shy or or you know any of the things that we typically think of as humble and so i wanted to come up with um kind of a definition that i felt like could work uh, that kind of captures humility without capturing that other stuff that I think is not humility because it's not embodied in, in the life of Christ. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So you you uh, you had mentioned you'd never written fiction before. Uh, have you ever written a book before? No, all, all I've done is uh, academic papers, hmm. uh, law, linguistics, philosophy, stuff. And so this idea of this book is coming together once you had this 100 uh, page outline and you decided to write the epilogue, which I read, which is good. I read that first actually, because that kind of puts mm -hmm. things in perspective. Um, yeah. Let's just talk a little bit about the process of writing a book. Like what, have you, what kind of things did you learn as you're writing a book, um, maybe dead ends you ran into or pitfalls? Uh, what, what did you learn about writing a book as you were writing the book? Interesting. Um... I, I don't know, At each page went through dozens and dozens of drafts. I think I, I realized I'm not a naturally a good writer and I, I don't even know if the, the final product turned out all that all that great, but just like if, if you really care about something and I, I really cared about this for whatever reason, I, I don't completely understand why, but it just, there was this strong desire inside of me to to do it that, that you can, um, you know, like with the spirit with you, you can do things that maybe you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Uh, and and just, just the idea of sticking with one problem, one question of what is humility for so long um, might seem like a, a narrow thing, but I feel like it's shaped the way I see everything else in, in the world because I, I, I just stuck with it for so long and, and I tried to really... Um, prove my own ideas wrong. I, I always tried to kind of play devil's advocate against myself. And a lot of what the book is, is dialogue back and forth between um, different characters kind of trying to, to sort these things out. So it was, um, I don't know, it, it was really cathartic and really interesting to kind of learn as I'm writing, because I, I didn't write things that I understood. I, I understood through writing, if, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So give let's kind of give us like an overview of the book itself. Sure. So the 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 way it's set up, uh, you know, just what what made you decide to set it up the way that you did, and then kind of just give us a just just let, give the audience an idea of what the book overall uh, talks about. Sure. So so I said there's there's kind of ideas about humility that I didn't think squared with the life of Christ. So I. I thought first, when I think of Christ, I think of his submission to the will of the Father, right? And I think that's kind of the first prong of humility, or, or it's submission to God's will. And then I thought, well, what does that have to do with intellectual humility? Because um, I think that's also an important, an important part of this. We don't want to be arrogant and, and know-it-alls that that's pride, that's not humility. Um, and I think what that is, it's, a, it's also submission, but instead of submitting to God's will, you're submitting to truth. You are um, treating truth as if it's something uh, superior to yourself, something that you can commune with as you can commune with God. Um, and then 
finally, it's our uh, relationship with other people. Um, are we putting ourselves above other people or are we trying to lift them up? So again, I, I use the word submissiveness. Are we, are we submissively serving and loving our brothers and sisters? I think that's what it means to be humble in those relationships. So the, the thesis statement basically is the, the core of humility is submissiveness. And that uh, takes place in kind of three types of relationships. Our relationship to God, are we submissive towards God? Are we submissive towards truth? That's the second one. And then the third one, are we um, submissively loving and serving other people? And of course, the, the third one is a bit more nuanced because we're it's, it's tricky. We don't submit our will to other people because all the time because there's potential for abuse and, and all that stuff. But um, I, I think typically we can kind of get a feel for uh, I'm putting this other person's needs above my own momentarily because I feel like that's what Christ would do in this situation. He would serve this person um, selflessly. Maybe selflessness is another way to, to get at the same thing. Um, so those are the books broken into three parts. Um, and those are those are kind of the three prongs, the three parts of the book. Would you say that in your past you struggled with pride? I think I struggle with pride in my present and in my mm -hmm. past, and surely I will in my future. Um, it, it's hard to compare. It's hard to know if I struggle with it more or less than other people. But like my experience at law school, I think is what really brought it to a head because uh, law school is inherently competitive. Your position depends on how many people are below you and how many people are above you. And so you're kind of forced to think of things through this competitive lens. And I think uh, part of humility is getting, getting out of that uh, in, in the way that we see life. Like you, you'll have to kind of find your place in the law school class rank or whatever, but I don't think that's how we should think about other people just in our lives. Uh, we should, you know, try to be lifting others. So I, I think I've always been a, a really, um, I've cared a lot about my school performance. I've cared a lot about kind of prestige probably too much. I was probably too excited to get into a fancy school like Harvard and um, I, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of still grappling with that, with that tension. I want to always make sure that I'm putting um, God first and I'm, I'm not ever pushing other people down in order to lift myself up. But at the same time, I still do want to succeed and I still do want to have success. And I think that's, um, yeah, I, I, I think it'll take me a long time to kind of ultimately resolve, resolve that. So you're engaging your struggle with pride. You're also engaging this text that you're, you're writing and you're meditating about these things. Can you give me examples of how, because of this journey that you're on, how it has affected you and your relationships with people that maybe you have approached things differently than you would have had you not taken this endeavor? Sure, sure. As I was contemplating, you know, what does it mean to be submissive towards the truth? Um, I, I thought a lot about what I believe about religion and politics and, you know, my, my thoughts on whatever the current issue is that's coming up or the pandemic. I wrote most of the book for my parents basement while going to Harvard Law School remotely so that's a whole a whole different story but I I think we all I, I certainly have a tendency to assume that I know the right answer to things and especially if it's something that's kind of within my wheelhouse something that you know deals with the legal issue and I've taken a class on that topic and you know there's a passage in the book where a friend calls me and talks about like all the um Democrats are going to ruin the country or whatever. And I'm a pretty conservative political person, but I kind of just went off and like tore their beliefs to shreds because I was able to kind of um, think quicker than them and, and show them how they weren't, um, you know, giving each side its due and, and use that as a kind of way to tear someone else down and show them how much smarter I was than them. Um, and I, I, I think back on that now, and it's really, um, I'm horrified at how I approached that situation. I, I wish I would have listened a lot more. I, I wish I would have um, 
yeah, tried to understand exactly why they think the way they do. And then I, I do still believe you need to give other people uh, other sides, other political sides that you don't agree with their due and, and try to be as fair as possible. But the way to do that isn't to make other people feel inferior, to make them feel less than, or to kind of flex your intellectual or knowledge muscles. I think the way to do that is, is seeking the spirit and trying carefully to, um, well, have you considered this? And I'm, I'm, I'm no expert. And I think both of us are just trying to figure out the truth. Maybe on, on some level, um, stuff like that is just like the manner that we're talking. But I, I think those little, those little details make a huge difference in, in our relationships. So I, maybe a long and circuitous answer to say, I try really hard to not think that I have the ultimate truth on any question. And I try to listen a lot more than I, than I talk. And I've found that people are a lot smarter and better than I, you know, give them credit for if I just pounce on their, you know, seemingly ignorant statements. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, I have to say that, you know, I struggled with pride and arrogance for, for, uh, especially when I was younger, when I was in my early twenties, yeah. you know, I was, I was running a congressional campaign at the age of 20. You know, I knew senators and congressmen by first name basis. And mm -hmm. I was, could be very arrogant and very prideful. So I think one yeah. of the reasons I wanted to have you on is because this is part of the struggle that I've had in my mm -hmm. life as well. And we both kind of come from similar things. Me as a, you know, the politics aspect, which can be very similar to the, your world, the dog eat dog right. world of law. Um, yeah. And 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 there are you, there are certain advantages that you can have in these areas where being prideful and arrogant and all this can actually put you in uh, it can put you in a very powerful position, but it can sure. also very uh, cause great detriment to your soul and your spirit. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it comes down to kind of the the part one of the book. Are you going to put God first, or are you going to put yourself first? And if if me as someone who claimed to put God first, I needed to take a hard look in the mirror and say, if, if I'm going to claim that I'm putting God first and I'm a, a follower of Christ, I, I can't then at the same time go and, and, you know, do whatever it takes to further my own ends and to kind of puff myself up and, and make myself look good because that's not what, that's not what the Christ that I worship teaches me. He, he's the kind of person that tries to lift other people and is, um, you know, he always submitted to the will of the father. And I, I find myself not always doing that, but, but increasingly, you know, striving to. Mm. You know, I think it's so important because of course this channel is kind of a convergence of the evangelical world with the uh, restorationist tradition. And we can have yeah. these conversations together. You know, our concepts of Jesus and God might differ in some areas, certainly, but I think that there is a commonality that we could learn about the humility of Christ and the sacrifice right. he did for us uh, at the cross and his, and of course we're taping this on Easter Sunday. Yeah. Um, so I think it's very appropriate actually to start our conversation on Easter Sunday because it all, yeah. it all comes back to that, you know, those moments leading up to the, to the crucifixion and the resurrection. Yeah. Can, can I ask you, Stephen, what, what was it that you said you struggled with that in your early twenties? What was it that helped you kind of get over it to some extent? Well, you know, sometimes, uh, God, I tell people God deconstructed me, if that makes any sense. Um, I felt like I had to be broken down so that I could serve him because I was so arrogant and so prideful and so all uh, just, just knew my stuff. And I went through an atheist phase too. So there can be arrogance in that too. Well, there's no God and you people who believe in God are, you know, you belittle people, you make fun of them, and you put yourself in this very prideful position. And as I journeyed back into faith, I came back a much a, a really, I don't want to say a broken person, I'd say a healed person. Yeah. And I think I was healed of that. And, but I needed to go through a gauntlet, if you will, for really to Lord to really break, break me down and build me back up again, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's interesting because there's there's several kind of analogies that I use throughout the book that deal with kind of getting rid of the bad stuff so that the stuff that's left is left strong. One of them is kind of, you know, washing away the sand so that you're only building on rock or 
um, yeah, getting rid of the, the dead wood or whatever. But I, I think it's a, I think that's how it happens for most of us. It's certainly how it happened for me. Um, one way to look at this is I just, you know, wrote a book and got all this, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot and then I kind of solved my problems. But the, the process of writing was very difficult for me because it was it was just spending long amounts of time self-reflecting and, and starting to see my own pride and my own flaws with increasing clarity. And that was not a comfortable process. Um, and, and then, you know, putting out a book where it's like, okay, now everybody else can kind of read about my problems and read about um, my issues also was, was uncomfortable, but something that I felt like um, God wanted me to do. And so, um, yeah. Well, that's great. You know, Benjamin, I just want to thank you so much for coming onto the program today. Thanks so much for having me. I look forward to more conversations, hopefully. So this is part of our series based on the book Pride and Paradox. Now my green screen doesn't read this really good. So yeah, sorry close. about that. There we go. Pride and Paradox by Benjamin Lee just came out this month, April of uh, 2022. And so I'm going to leave a link in the description. So for those of you who'd like to purchase the book, uh, we will have this series, uh, our Tuesday talk series uh, based on the book Pride and Paradox. So maybe we'll talk a little bit about your life and other things uh, off topic as well. But we're going to, sure. this is part of our new uh, new rotation in our Tuesday series. Uh, folks, I think Benjamin is a very uh, intelligent person, uh, thoughtful. I think he brings something to this table that's very interesting. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank you so much for coming on. Do you have any final words you'd like to share with the audience today? I don't think so. Thank, thank you so much for having me on. And I guess just like to wish everybody a happy Easter. And um, yeah. thank you again. So I just want to remind my audience to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification button for when a new uh, video is released on YouTube. Also, we are now on Apple, uh, Spotify, uh, Google, and we just been added to Audible and a couple other uh, platforms for podcasts as well. Uh, just want to remind our viewers that if you'd like to support our channel financially, you can uh, support us on our Patreon page, which I will leave a link. I just want to thank everybody, uh, mormonbookreviews at gmail.com if you need to get a hold of me. Um, thanks again, Benjamin, and you all have yourself a great day.